Hello, my purple bandidos. Welcome back to more Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. I'm Purple Rodri. Last time we finished off catching the legendary bird trio of the Kanto region. And in today's episode, we're here back at One Island because this is where a majority of the post game takes place. So let's go ahead and get it started. Now, if you guys remember, we came here a little bit ago before we took on the Elite Four and we met this man Celio who was talking to Bill. They were talking about fixing some machine, that they fixed it up, but that it was still missing a couple parts. Now, basically what we're going to be going after from here on now in the post game is two gems. Uh, so the Ruby and Sapphire gems, which, you know, if uh, you can understand, it'll basically allow you to trade with Ruby and Sapphire in that generation. Now, there's actually one of the gems hidden here in one island, and it's near a location we've previously been to, so that's what we're going to be taking care of today. Hope you guys are enjoying your Friday. Man, you can't believe uh, how happy I am that it's Friday. I finally took four exams. I had one Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I think they went okay, so I'm just glad that that's done and over with. It was a ridiculously stressful week. I feel like I was always running around doing things. I feel like I was just really, really busy. You know, you ever have one of those weeks where you're just running around all the time? You feel like you don't have any time to sit down? You know, last night and today were kind of like my first days to just relax a little bit. So I've just been playing some League of Legends. You know, one of my uh, spare accounts is a silver. So I'm trying to get it to gold because my main is in gold. So I'm just trying to get it up to silver. It's been going pretty well, you know, playing with some friends and, and just relaxing and passing uh, passing the time. So I'm just glad that, you know, I finally have the opportunity to, to just take a breather and just chill. You know, it's the little things in life that matter the most. Uh, like, I actually put up this picture of my Instagram. I was just hanging out with some friends, and this little butterfly, you know, flew onto my hand. And I was like, whoa, this is weird. And it, like, flew onto my hand, and then it just, like, flew away right after. And I was like, whoa, like, you have to appreciate those little moments. You know, they come once in a while, so, like, I took a picture of it before it flew away. I put it up in my Instagram. It's kind of kind. It's kind of nice. It's like a little monarch butterfly. It was really cool. Uh, I was just kind of surprised. Like, it just kind of, like, floated onto me, uh, and it was just, like, a really nice experience. You know, I think it's little things like that that matter the most. Sometimes in life, we don't realize some of the things that are going on, you know? Sometimes we take, like, little things for granted, and I think we can become better people if we do just stop for a second and just, you know, take a look. Like, look at the clouds or just look at the sunset or feel the nice breeze outside. You know, little things like that. I, I really do enjoy those sort of things, and I'm just kind of glad that, you know, I get to experience them once in a while, even if it is just sitting around playing some League of Legends after a stressful week, you know, before hanging out with my friends or, or something like that. And it's just, it's kind of nice to take it all in. I hope you guys, you know, your school's going well for you. I know that a lot of you guys are still in school. You know, I hope you're knocking things out like I am. I'm trying to just stay ahead, you know, always planning on uh, staying ahead on all those sorts of things. And I, there's actually one class that I have where I have to make like a 30 second commercial or something like that. Like a 30 second commercial on anything I want, on any like product I want. And uh, I'm thinking up of ideas. So um, you guys are clever people. I would love to hear, you know, whatever you guys have to think, like a 30 to 60 second thing. That would be kind of cool. You know, I've thought of a few. They, they're not very good. They're pretty much like the most generic things you could come up with, like a like a bounty commercial, you know, like a laundry commercial. I, I really don't know. I got to just think of something. I feel like, you know, in my dreams, I have a lot of weird, crazy dreams sometimes where they're like either really scary and terrifying 95% of the time. 95% of the time I have nightmares. Fun fact. I don't know why. All, all I have are nightmares. I don't usually have good dreams. It's really weird. It's happened to me like since I was a kid. I've always had just really strange nightmares. But, you know, once in a while, I'll have a good dream, and maybe I'll turn that into something, and who knows what could happen. But, you know, it is weird that I have nightmares so much because I don't feel like I'm really too scared of many things. You know, when I wake up, I'm not really scared of things. I'm thankful for everything I have. And, you know, if someone tells me, you know, oh, there's something scary, like, this terrifies me, I'm usually like, no, not so much. The only thing I could think of that actually really, really scares me is the thought of skydiving. I don't know why. Uh, you know, I've gone on a lot of plane rides. The last one I went on was for PAX, for PAX Prime. And I was looking out the window, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at the point where the houses are really small, and you can still see them before you go up above the clouds. And I was just looking down, and I was a little surprised. I was like, whoa, I really am terrified of skydiving. I feel like, I don't know, I don't think I could do it. I don't know how high up they go, if they jump while it's still in the clouds, or they jump when you can see the houses. But just something in me tells me, don't do it. It's so against, like you know the norm it's just yeah it's so weird like I, I completely feel freaked out just thinking about it imagine like you go up there on a plane to jump out and I've had friends who have done it you know and one of my friends told me that 
the scariest part isn't the ride up. The ride up, you're nervous, but it's not the scariest part. The scariest part is once you actually open the door, and he told me they have like a little plank, almost like walking the plank on like, you know, pirates, like what pirates did. And they apparently make you walk the plank, and then the guy's just like, jump. You know, because you do it with an instructor the first time, and they just tell you, jump. I would be sitting there, like, just looking down and be like, oh my gosh, I'm about to jump out of a plane. I'd be shaking. I'd probably pee my pants at that point. I'd be like, no, I can't, I can't. And then all of a sudden, I'm guessing your instructor just jams you out. And you're just yelling your lungs out, flying. And I think it takes about two to three seconds, my friend said, for the shock to actually hit you. And then once it does, you're like, oh, this isn't that bad. This is kind of cool. And then you enjoy it the rest of the time. Because I'm guessing you're only, like skydiving free falling for like 15 seconds you know and then i'm guessing it's gonna be the parachute after that nothing you know too long but still those 15 seconds you must be absolutely terrified out of your mind i can't be the only person that thinks that it's just not normal to jump out of a plane just who was the first person that went up on a plane and was like you know what i could jump down from here whoever that psycho was i would love to meet them because i feel like it would be so interesting to be like hey man so what made you jump out of a plane? What craziness made you jump from this high up out of a plane it, with a little umbrella holding you up? Like, I just don't get it. It completely scares the crap out of me. I don't think I'm ever going to do it. I feel like I will do it, honestly. I feel like I might do it eventually, maybe in the future. Maybe if someone pushed me to do it, but I don't think I would ever do it on my own just because it scares me so freaking bad. It's just one of the most terrifying things. I have nightmares about falling. I don't know what that means, but I do have nightmares about falling, and skydiving completely scares the crap out of me. We found the ruby I mentioned to you guys. So now that we have the ruby, we can actually make our way back to Celio, and he'll pretty much give us some information on where we can find the next one, which is a little bit trickier. It's the, the ruby one's pretty easy to find. You know, it wasn't too troublesome. I could just run through there and pretty much figure it out. It's the sapphire that's going to be a little bit more difficult to find. All right, guys, let's head inside of the, the Pokemon orange building. Not sure what it is. And uh, let's talk to Celio. Oh, that's... We handed the ruby to Celio. Thank you, Rodri. You're simply amazing. May I ask one more giant favor? No. What are you going to ask this time? Do you want my lunch? Are you trying to take my nurse Joy out? Are you trying to get me to go and jump into a volcano here on the Sevi Islands? Because I already took on Moltres. And I had a little bit of a difficult time out there. You know, it was I was shaking up. It was sweaty. And it was just, it was not that fun. You know, climbing all the way up there. You try climbing all the way up there as a 10-year-old person. Ah, uh, wait. I actually should have healed up my Pokemon. Let me heal up my Pokemon before we go any further. Because I feel like, you know, they took a little bit of damage. I like to keep them in full health. Nurse Joy, you know what, what else I like to keep in full health? This Brocken body! No, not really. Not, not. You know how many rare candies I eat on the daily? I know they're meant for Pokemon. Call me Shaggy. I like Scooby Snacks. All right, guys. I'm going to be back in a couple seconds when I figure out exactly what it is we have to do. Okay, guys. We're back. I finally figured out what we have to do. Now, Celio actually gave us the Tri-Pass or the Rainbow Pass or whatever it was. And what that allows us to do is to actually go ahead and explore four through seven islands. So we have one through seven. Those are the islands. The first one we're going to go explore is Four Island. And hey, look who it is. Hey, Rodri. What are you doing here in the Sevi Islands? You should quit copying me, you know. Anyways, I already got my Pokemon eggs, so I'm done with this island. Ha, I bet you don't even know about Pokemon eggs. You will never feel... Wait, you, wait, what are you talking about Pokemon eggs? Pokemon, you, you're telling me. You're telling me. That Pokemon lay eggs? Oh, come on, man. How, of, of course I knew that. Hey, I just found that out. I'm going to have to tell Nurse Joy. I just found out a little more information about Pokemon. High fives. She actually is going to think I'm learning. Not just, you know, running around, uh, attacking things and defeating Team Rocket without really knowing too much about Pokemon. That's okay. Let's talk to this guy. Ooh, chili. I made a slushy. Ugh. You made a slushy out of the ice in a cave? It's kind of gross. Imagine how many nasty, dirty things have touched the wall. and ah, I don't know. I wouldn't eat ice off of a wall like this. You know, guys, fun fact. If you ever see yellow snow, take a bite. I hear it's tasty. Just kidding. Do not ever eat yellow snow. Don't ever eat yellow snow. My goodness. It's not lemonade. That's all I have to tell you. Ooh, one of these things. I remember these from Zelda. 
I'm pretty sure if we step on these cracks, it'll drop us down a floor. So that's kind of exciting, guys. That's a little excitement here. I enjoy it. Um, this one? I, I really have no idea where the heck I'm going. I'm just exploring it around. I did kind of figure out where we were supposed to go, and it's here because this is what's going to lead us to the sapphire. But it's not it. the sapphire is actually the tougher one to get like I said the ruby one was easy What am I doing? All right, that thing wouldn't let me turn I think we're gonna have to go down the other one then it wasn't this one It was this wait was it this one hang on wait. Oh, we're on the other side of this now who comes up with these puzzles? You know, honestly, I would love to meet the guy that comes up with these just to be like, what evil guy, you know, I invents these things. So whoever designed like the forest or the water temple, I mean, in Zelda, I want to meet that guy. Because uh, if I'm ever looking to capture somebody and uh, lock them up in a puzzly way, we got the right guy for the job. You know, I'm sure uh, he'll come up with something crazy to, to do. But no, I'm not. The only person I'm going to lock up is Nurse Joy's heart. You know what I'm saying, guys? Literally lock her up, though. And, um... The basement of our mom in Pallet Town because that's what we do around here. All right, just joking. We found HM07 Waterfall. And if you guys remember, the only Pokemon that can learn this is Glaze. Glaze has a lot of really good moves. So I'm actually going to go ahead and forget uh, Ice Beam for it just because we can buy Ice Beam from the corner store, from the coin shop. I can go ahead and do it. I'll buy it back. And if we don't do that, we can't get through where we're gonna get through today and I really want to go ahead and do this just because it's just another step getting closer to the post game we're actually very close to wrapping up the post game which I know is a little bit surprising but there isn't as much post game as you would expect here uh, you know there really isn't that much in fire red catching a couple legendaries is what we have left and by a couple I mean it's a good amount of legendaries you know, it's still a good amount we have to catch. I think there's five or something like that. There's a couple special event ones which we will be taking care of. You know, so it's not it's not too shabby. Wait, oh, there's a cave. Okay, the sign was like half blocking the cave that I couldn't see. And look who that is. Give your filthy hands off the Pokemon in the cave. Do as I say or you'll have me to answer to. Ah, shut it, lady. Wait, wait, you don't tell my girl Lorelei to shut it. You know what that means? Doki, earthquake. Doki, earthquake. Take this mother fudger down. Tear, or use the earthquake. Tear, tear this cave down right now, Doki. Bring them down. Tear it up. No? We can't use them on humans? Yeah, we can't. We were not allowed to use earthquake on humans? Why is that? We're just... No? No? Prof Professor Oak is hitting me up on the uh, calling thingy. He told me I can't use earthquake on Pokemon. On, uh, you know, Pokemon trainers. That's, that's too bad. Man, if I was in the Pokemon world and I saw some crime, I'd be like, yo... Achoo, how about a thunderbolt right there? I'd be like, Kaji, just drop a little flamethrower. You know, just just a little bit. You know, just sizzle them. Just sizzle them a little bit. Don't burn them to a crisp. Just give them a little sizzle. You know, tan them up a little bit. You know, just uh, just a little bit. I, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I think crime would stop. Or it would pick up a lot because the bad guys would go insanely hard and get, like, super strong Pokemon. Kind of like Team Rocket did with Mewtwo. Win, loss, 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 win, win. You never know what could happen if Pokemon was real. It'd be insane. I think it would be so fun, though. What I would give for it. With that, guys, we defeated this Team Rocket Grunt. Say something to my girl Lorelai again. You'll see what happens. Okay, looks like we're done here. Huh, so this could be weak. You tell me, where have you taken the capture Pokemon? I'm smashing your ring once and for all. Wait, what ring are you smashing? They, you stealing this man's ring? His wife is going to be mad. You're breaking his wife's ring. The, that's the wedding ring. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Okay, so we, wait. They, they just tell us the Rocket Warehouse is on Five Island. Good. Keep that in mind, guys. Rocket Warehouse. Rodri, thank you, but this is awful. I was born and raised here on these islands. I had no idea that those horrible criminals were loose here. Well, with that, guys, it looks like we have finished what we had to do for today. And we have figured out where we're going next. In order to get into the Rocket Layer... We have one of the passwords, we need the second one. So next time, we will hopefully go after the Sapphire, find the second password while we're at it, and continue on from here. It's, uh, you know, getting tricky. There's a lot more to this post game, but it's kind of cool, you know, seeing some old familiar faces. And I didn't meet old by that old lady next to the lake, I just met familiar faces. Nurse Joy, your face is beautiful. Not as that old lady, I mean, she's really nice too, but Nurse Joy, that was your mom? Well, she seems like a lovely lady. I'm gonna go take her for a walk. I'm going to take her for a nice long walk, Nurse Joy. Thank you so much. Uh, and with that, guys, we are done here for today. Nurse Joy's angry. We'll continue from here in Four Island. Hopefully going to Five Island, finding the Sapphire. If you guys have any tips, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the ne next episode. Goodbye.